Hey everybody, hope you're all well. Uh, in this video, I wanted to react to a few things that have happened this week and share some thoughts and get yours as well. Um, first of all, I want to um, address the Facebook ban issue. Uh, it's been a bit of a whirlwind couple of days, obviously with the um, the news ban and whatnot. For whatever reason, the Blue Broad Facebook page was deemed to be news. Uh, and so the other morning I woke up to my absolute um, horror to see that the the Facebook page had been blocked or deleted or whatever had happened. Um, and long story short, it's back now. This morning I woke up and it was back and uh, a big sigh of relief. Um, it's crazy how attached you get to such things. I mean, I've been putting content up on that Facebook page or doing something on that Facebook page, you know, f every day for the better part of three years now. Um, so yeah, you get attached to such things. They, these, you know, it's, 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 it's life's work. That's what it's all about. And Blue Broad began on Facebook. So um, we are back. I wanted to thank those of you who did reach out um, and show some support and share the page and, and, and invite people to the, um, the Facebook group. Um, it really means a lot and you really find out about who's in your corner when, when shit hits the fan. So thank you very much. Um, moving forward, I think the best case uh, or the best cause of action, I should say, is um, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, now is the time. Um, because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Obviously, things are very volatile. They can change just like that. Click of a button and you can lose your account. Um, Facebook's connected to Instagram, obviously. So in the event that such thing does happen, I think now is the time to ask you. I don't really ask invoice. I usually put an end screen that asks you to subscribe, but it's important for you to like and subscribe um, on the videos where you can. Obviously, if you enjoy them, please do that. If you don't, no problem. Um, but that'll help reach more Carlton fans. And, and really, that's what it's all about, building a good community. Um, I want to be able to talk to more of you this year for fan cams and, and such things. And, you know, without the Facebook audience, um, you know, it's not that it's not possible. It's just there's 7,000 people that I cannot reach. So, um, yeah, that would be what I have to say on that, uh, yesterday we had a best and fairest. We had a 2020 best and fairest in February of 2021. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the whole thing. I, I was, it was disappointing in the end to have it in February, obvious for obvious reasons. I understood, not understood, I heard and received the message about uh, wanting to have the best and fairest in person so we could celebrate Simo and Cruiser. I think we got it wrong, um, but that's okay because we all get it wrong. In the end, to have our best and fairest just in an hour on Twitter with a, an update after round 12 and an update at the end, it just really took the sting away. Um, I thought it was, there was an opportunity there to maybe stream it, didn't happen. Um, I understand the logistics of such things. There would have been a lot of planning that went into organizing the actual event and for that to be canceled was a real gut check and then Ultimately, we just got to a point where it was like, let's just do this thing because we've got a season uh, to, to think about in less than a month. Um, and so that was disappointing, but I hope that there are some learnings to take away from that. Um, I mean, I think I think the, the use of Twitter is, is great. I think it could have been done a little bit better, um, but ultimately, I, I just think we need to be a little bit more agile uh, moving forward. Um, I think we thought we were being innovative in, in waiting, but... Um, ultimately, it's it's February 19. We're having a best and fairest for 2020. And, and Jacob Wiedering, who won the award, didn't really get to enjoy it. But ha having said that, he's probably not the type of guy um, to want to be reveling in his own work. You know you know the makeup of, of his character. And yeah, I think we could have even just had a Kate Simpson and Matthew Cruiser retirement or farewell function. It could have been two separate functions, generate some revenue for the club, um, and also give those two, you know, the farewell that they absolutely deserve. So yeah, I guess it's done now. We can move on from it. Ultimately, it was very embarrassing as a supporter, I've got to say, personally. Um, you know, not everything can be all roses. I think this was one of the things that we just didn't get right. Um, there's going to be more things that we don't get right. All of us fans, everyone gets things wrong. Um, and hopefully we can just move forward and learn from this. And um, yeah, I think we just got caught being a little bit too cute. But that's okay. Let's talk about it. The best and fairest. Um, Jacob Wiedering deservedly won the best and fairest. I was very, very confident in him winning it. Uh, I thought he was consistent throughout the entire season. I thought Sam Walsh started a little slow, but came home really strong. And that really uh, reflected in the fact that he wasn't in the top five after 12 rounds, but he ended up finishing second. Um, I want to take you back to, well, I'm going to show you the top 10 now. 
um, for what, what was last night's best and fairest. And then I also want to show you the top 10 of the Blue Broad um, votes. And I learned a few things. I learned a few things. As you can see, I had Weedering, Walsh, and Kern. I was pretty confident that was the top three. Um, Plowman finished fourth and Jones finished fifth. I had Plowman in the top 10 at eighth and I had Jones right on 10th. Um, Plowman is an interesting one. I had my light bulb moment with Plowman at the 2019 Best and Fairest where he finished third. Um, and that was a year where I heavily criticized him. I didn't see his role. I didn't see his importance. I wasn't watching the game properly. I, I, ultimately, um, the coaches are the ones giving out these votes. Uh, and when I heard guys like Cripps, guys like David Teague talk about Lockie Plowman, and when I sort of watch him from afar and the fact that you don't hear about him, he doesn't talk, there's no scandals, there's no Instagram, there's no social media, um, he just does his job, um, that earned my respect and um, I got it wrong. And I think more people are going to realize his importance to the club. I think he's adding layers of consistently consistency to his game in being in that top five conversation. Uh, I think that is what's going to help him earn the respect that he deserves. And look, ultimately... What matters is what the people inside the football club think of him. Um, he, I mean, obviously the, what the fans think of him is important. However, him doing his job for the club, for the team, is what's most important. So I think I just hope that everyone comes around and, and just sort of watches him from a different lens now. He's finished third and fourth in successive years. It's a great effort. It really is. Um, he plays a, a non-sexy role. And uh, I, think, I think we need to be very mindful of um, of that and I'm just I'm happy for him to finish top five again um, I had Doherty and Cripps finishing fourth and fifth as you can see um, here they fin I mean they finished in the top 10 um, I think what I learned from that was I gave I gave a little bit more weight to Doherty and Cripps because they were the leaders Doherty more so because he'd come off the two knees and I thought you know what he's been able to produce given what he's been through um, I think that's probably where I weighted him a little bit too heavily um, and, and the same with Cripps. He was the captain. He's the standout guy. And so he probably just gets, he catches my attention a little bit more. So I got, I mean, I wasn't completely wrong, but uh, there, there are definitely things to learn there. Um, I didn't have Jack Martin and Levi in the top 10. Uh, I had Levi finishing 13th and I had uh, Jack Martin finishing 14th. For me, it was, he missed quite a few games. I think my scoring system here is what hurt me with Jack Martin because he missed games. I rated every player out of 10 for every game. And that's obviously different to how um, the coaches do their voting as well. So yeah, having said that, on an average, Jack Martin was absolutely in the top 10 based on what he was able to produce last year. And um, that's a great effort for him in his first season for the club. Um, Simo finishing top 10. Uh, I managed to have him. I think I've had him ninth. Yeah, I did. I had him ninth. I'm happy to get that one uh, there. The one that I just completely was, uh, you know, misaligned with the club was Will Setterfield. I thought he played pretty well. I gave I gave a little bit more weight to him throughout the year because he was that young up and coming player. Um, not to say the club didn't think he had a good year, but obviously not as good as what I thought. Um, but th th this exercise was great. This is something I'll definitely be doing uh, for years moving forward, um, just to sort of. See, see where you know I'm watching the game or where we're watching the game because I like to get your feedback on the play ratings as well um, and go from there. But look, ultimately, Jacob Wiedering, a deserved winner. Sam Walsh, a deserved second place. Um, and Ed Kerno third. And I'm, I'm just happy for Jacob to get the recognition uh, that he deserves. Um, you know, he's he's done it in terms of he's, he's come out the other end. He's had his first four or five years in the system. He's had some challenges, some ups and downs. He's been thrown forward. He's had criticism. Um, thrown at him and he's managed to come through I wouldn't say unscathed because it, it, they're all learning blocks but I love the way he carries himself uh, I love the way that he speaks his acceptance speech was just all class and uh, I'm just so proud of him and I'm, I'm proud of the club and I'm, I'm glad in a way I'm, I'm glad that Cripps didn't steal the show I'm glad we've got more names here um, to talk about this means we're moving forward it's positive for me um, and it's a good uh, it's a good reminder of what was last season from a positive lens. I know that we didn't make finals and that's really what we're judging the, the team on from, from here on in. Um, but it's, it's good to get it out of the way and get the closure. So well done to Jacob Wiedering. I love the fact that guys like Nick Newman, Tom DeConing and Liam Jones got some recognition as well. Uh, I really did. I thought that was a, a nice touch. Uh, I love that Mark Pittenet got an award as well. Um, you know, he obviously, you, you sort of, you take those awards that aren't the best and fairest and it really um, makes you think about the value of these people within the club 
who do things that we maybe don't see, especially guys like Nick Newman, who was injured last year and um, he must have been doing some great work with the development of some of the other players for him to receive that award. So um, big kudos to him. Let me know what you thought about the best and fairest. Share some of your thoughts. Did you think uh, Weedering was a deserved winner? I think generally we all were happy that Weedering or Walsh were, were in that top two. I think it was always going to be one of the two of them. Um, let me know some of the surprises in that top 10 and, and let me know your thoughts about how the whole best and fairest function was was handled um do you think it was just unlucky do you think we could have done better how can we do better next time uh share your thoughts on it and uh, we'll go from there finally i want to touch on the carlton respects round um this is with the aflw who today play against the richmond tigers um our carlton girls play against the richmond tigers and uh it's a very special uh and significant um, message for me, as you, you'll, you'll see in the videos, I always, I've been wearing this for a couple of years now. Um, haven't really spoken about this, but I, I do think it's it's important given, you know, we have a platform here and, and um, to, sp to spread the right message. Um, I had my experience with, you know, I used to watch my mum get belted. Um, my sperm donor, my biological father, he left very early in my life. Um, yeah, he used to beat her up and I used to watch that as a three, four year old. And that's not something um, you want to be hearing. Um, however, it's important to have that shock value because um, this is what it's all about. It, it's about uh, the gender inequality in relationships. Um, I think we're moving in the right direction. I think we've got some ways to go, but um, ultimately domestic violence is, is a very serious issue and it's not something that um, is going to be tolerated or should ever be tolerated ever. Um, and that's why this round is important to me. It means it means a lot. It really does. It's It's something that um, rocked me to my core um, at a young age. Uh, I saw things that I should not have seen at a young age, um, and I've come out better for it. My mum doesn't talk about it, but she's the you know she's the strongest woman that I know. She's been through everything, and um, I love her a lot and appreciate her a lot. And uh, you know she has molded me into the the, the young man that I am today. And uh, I guess I just wanted to share that with you, and hopefully it um, just reinforces the message. Um, that it's not acceptable and uh, we need to make sure that uh, that stays that message stays paramount throughout um, you know the course of history as we as we move forward in this world where we're moving rapidly things are changing but um, that message cannot be forgotten so uh, yeah wish the um, wish the Carlton ladies all the best today I'll have a review up obviously after the game probably tomorrow morning and uh, we'll leave it there go the mighty blues hey!